Hey guys, Anthony, 4 before Diesel. Just a quick video, a different way to put front uh, suspension in. If you're getting a wheel alignment, if you're definitely going to get a wheel alignment, then there's an easier way to do things. We've shown you the way before, taking off the bash plates. You can remove this sway bar out of the way. You can take these tie rod ends out. And then with these two bars out of the way, what's right in the picture there, the strut after you undo those three nuts at the top and this bolt here at the bottom, which we're already working on, um, you just bring it out this way. But however, if you are going to be replacing these control arms with whatever you like, or getting a wheel on it where they're gonna use these adjusters here to uh, adjust your camber and caster to get it all set up correctly, if that's gonna happen, then there's an easy way to change your suspension. So it's optional. You might save a little bit on time or on labor, but then you're gonna to have to pay for a wheel alignment. And we're not saying that you need a wheel alignment. And a lot of places that say you need a wheel alignment after you get your lift kit, oh, absolutely, you must get one. That's because they've done it the easy way, even though you've paid the big bill. So when you're comparing suspension installation prices, it's kind of like this is the this situation, right? You might be comparing, oh, why are they so cheap? And, why is Anthony so dear? Well, I'm not so dear because I don't do it anymore, but I know people that do. But the point is, maybe they're a bit dearer in the other place. Maybe they're a bit cheaper. But the way they do it is they do this extra work so that they don't have to touch a wheel on it because maybe they don't know or trust anyone to do wheel on it any more than I do. So if you know someone that can do an awesome wheel alignment, then be sure to let them know. Can you please quote me on dropping the lower control arms? That is, take this bolt out. So these two bolts we've already removed here. Uh, once this bolt comes out and these are loose, which is happening very soon, this whole lower control arm here is going to drop down out of the way and later in the video I'll demonstrate. All we need to do then is undo those three top nuts. When I say three, not the one in the middle of the picture, the two at the front and there's one hidden around the back there. See up the back there? Right. Not the one in the middle. Okay. Dangerous. You know, precaution, danger, disclaimer, all of that stuff. You know. Don't touch it if you don't know what you're doing, right? Just trying to help you out and give you some ideas here. It's one piece of the million piece jigsaw puzzle, so subscribe, turn the bell on so you don't miss all the other bits and pieces that have got to come out so you can get it all together by the end. When is the end going to be? You never know. When is the end going to be? Anyway, right, so three nuts off, you can see that that coil, coil over, strut, whatever you want to call it, that assembly will drop straight out the bottom here soon. So what are we going to do now? I'm going to loosen these off. Actually, we won't take the bolts out, we'll loosen, loosen this one and the rear one off and we'll take this bolt out and we'll let this lower control arm do drop down out of the way and we'll show you how then there's nothing, you know, to demonstrate underneath and then we've just got to go ahead and loosen those three top nuts and the whole thing will drop right, out. There it is, I'm going to go down to down, 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 right? So down, so you get the picture, right? Well, you know, you've got a drive shaft there, but that kind of, it just comes straight out that gap there, yeah? See the arms, it's just down here now, it's hanging, sort of just... It's just swinging in the breeze, see that? It's just swinging there, right? Oh, just like a... What swings like that, mate? Like the pendulum, isn't it, you know? Or something, you know? What is it? Seesaw. Yeah, bloody seesaw, that's it. <laughs> like the swings down the park, right? It's just swinging away. <laughs> anyway, right, there's the strut. See, nothing else is holding it in. Other than, right, just have a quick... Let's have a look at these bushes here, just so you can see. Genuine at three... This has done over 300,000, this one, hasn't it? Yeah, over 300,000 Ks, mate. They're, <laughs> they're pretty awesome stuff, those genuine. The only thing we don't like for the outback travel, see the, see it's just a little weld there. It doesn't go all the way around, right? See, it doesn't go around there. It's just each side. They can break, you know, rare, but it can happen. It's like, you don't want to be on a trip and have that happen, do you? So lucky this one doesn't really go on trips. That's why it's getting standard suspension. Replacement, three nuts up the top there. And if we're not careful, that thing will fall out and put a big dent in the concrete. Probably happened before. Nah, not quite. We do drop things, but not that. Anyway, we're going to lower the vehicle down. We're going to, what are we going to take the arms out? Because we're changing the arms. We'll get the arms out first. We'll drop the arms out. Then we'll change the strut, right? Then we'll put the arms back in. That's a good option. Let's this do is that. obviously what it looks like when it's out, right? So you've got the hole in the middle for the shocker rubber in the center of the shock or strut or coil over, whatever you want to call it. The three empty holes where the nuts go, right? And just looking straight down, right, to the floor. Bang, straight in and out. That'd be why this one's laying there on the floor, because we just dropped it straight out. The arms, once again, drop straight out. Pull the two bolts out, straight out. You know, straight out, and they're gonna go straight right, in. So he's got the back bolt off, the, one of the front ones off. See, the whole thing's just, you know, bang. He's being, so muscles on the left arm holding it up, right hand, 
whatnot, and then bang, down she goes, straight down. Watch your fingers, mate. It's always when we're videoing things go wrong, right? And just bang gently out she goes, just like that. Beautiful. That's just like the so other you one. got the old ones and the fresh ones. All right, let's get that nice clean one up and whack it in the vehicle. That's it, bring it up nice and gently. Oh, careful, we don't want to scratch that beautiful new thing. Look at that, beautiful new top hats, genuine springs, shocks. Over 300,000 K is probably a bit too long, but when you know what you're happy with, that's what you do. Make sure you've got a nut handy, do it up all the way. And then, of course, you can rest your arms and go and get the other two nuts and get those started when you're ready. I mean, we can demonstrate doing up all the nuts, mate. They don't want to, they want to watch you play with your nuts. I mean, doing up those nuts. There you go. Jeez, you're spinning those pretty quick. Beautiful, and the back one goes on, and then of course, tight. don't forget to tighten them up. There's people that have had those nuts, you know, suspension installers, forgot to do them up, you know? So, not good. Make sure they just snip them up nice and tight. Torque spec, no idea. NFI, I think it is, but, uh, Basically, yeah, we don't know, just nice and tight, you know, it's an M8, standard M8, what, probably 30 Newton meters, I'll take a guess, to do the job. You're not going to bust it at that, but it's not going to come loose, happy days. If you're wondering what tools, um, it's a 14 mil, usually, you know, usually, you never know who's worked on the car, and we've had them other sizes as well, but usually they're 14 mil, and ratchet span is ideally what you want. Once you do it the front two, the easy two, rather than try and ratchet span, you get your finger around there like you did and tighten it up by hand. Bang, and just get those nice and tight like that. Beautiful, that's about 30 Newton meters. Beautiful. Right, and same on the one around the back. With that stock bash plate, you don't have to actually take it off. It's got some hooks there. You just be very careful, because they can fall off, but you have to check the situation. But in this case, like happens quite often, we just take the four bolts out, then it swings down at the front, and that gets it enough out of the way to, that's to get to the control arms, the bolts. Right, here we go, passenger side, up she comes. Generally, oh, oh, that's not scratch. That's just a bit of dirt because everything's dirty. It does rub as it goes past. You get, you got to wiggle it a bit between that side and that side. But and you know what? Nobody's looking anyway. It's not furniture. But look, it's not scratches. You get some dirty marks. You have to twist it. You can't, can't get it in the hole. You got to get it in the hole before you get the nuts. Uh, get the nuts. Screw it. Quick, screw it fast, mate. These people are busy. They haven't got time. <laughs> Pressure's on. All right, there we go. So Nick can rest while your arms. While he's resting his arms, there, have a look at the condition. Over 300,000 Ks in these bolts are bloody awesome. So the materials they use are great, but if you're going off-road or in salt water, dust, dirt, and mud, you need to regularly clean the car properly so that these come out like this. This is what we call a standard lower, uh, lower control arm replacement job. No problem, okay? If they're all rusted and seized up and we've got to cut them out and replace them, we, the good news is we've got them in stock, they're on the shelf, we've got a couple of sets for each vehicle. Rarely does it happen, but it's not a normal job and there's extra charges and you know, most extra charges can be paid with Heineken's and Coronas for this sort of thing. Mate, you're quick, I thought you were resting your arms. Well, a bit of yak, yak, yak down there, job's done, look at that, beautiful, just nice and tight. And always, you know, double, triple check, you go front, back, front, back and check them again, go, you know, back here, whatever, anyway getting boring isn't it woman yeah, and that's what it looks like a little bit different with the new one up there and a nice new bit down the bottom here that's what it looks like with the uh, lower control arms taken out of position that's what the empty slots look like for those that want to know a bit of detail like that what about what size the spanners are what is it 22 and 30 is that right 22 and 30 mil guys for the nuts and bolts and things on here and beware when you're taking them out because one of them the bolt turns and one of them the nut turns you know there's the front one and the rear one's different just take a look and you'll figure it out and we've got some other videos i think showing you how to do that too oh, there it is that's how they just slip back in position the other side's already up see just gently slip them in they're not usually too hard to get in unless someone's pressed the bushes and they've bent the arms and that's one of the downsides of changing the bushes they can be stuck really badly these bushes in these arms and that's where, okay, it's expensive to replace the genuine arm, but guess what? It's over 300,000 K, so it's like small money over the time, if you know what I mean. So you get that up in position, and obviously that's the bolt that goes through there. Spin that around, beautiful. This bolt is the one that's the nut. At the back, you've got to undo the nut. Do not try and turn this bolt, because it's located in here, right? You'll get what I mean. The rear one is the nut. The front one, this is just the uh, adjuster, beautiful. 
That's what's used to adjust the wheel alignment, see? What do they call it? Eccentric. See, we've marked it because we're just putting it back where it was. All right, the bolt goes through. But with the front one, the nut goes on, but see the nut? Let me show you, see that nut? Get there already, you gotta screw it. See, that is what doesn't turn on the front one. So just think of it outwards. At the front, it's the bolt. So furthest outwards, front, you undo the bolt on the front one. On the rear, you undo the nut. So at the front, the bolt, don't turn this nut. And on the rear, don't turn here. On the outside, you can see what's about to happen. All right, that goes on, and then you spin the nut. And therefore, what size is this one again? 20. 20, that's right. We said 22. that. 20? 22. 22. 22. Yeah, we said that. We could be wrong, though, so no, we reserve uh, the right to be wrong in everything we do and say. Anyway, uh, yeah, in all seriousness mm. and all jokingly, mm. you should always uh, double check your information, but you know, there you go, right? Right, there it is, right, and then what do we do? We're going to swing it up. Right, there we go, we'll swing it up, see how it goes up. And bang, just line up that uh, bottom of the shocker. Look at this one person job. Well, hey, watch it, mate, watch out the camera there, mate. <laughs> get out of me way, he says, get out of me way, we won't have a problem. Yeah, you got to sort of arm down a bit. Arm's got to come down a little. So it's a little bit awkward, you know, on your own. It'd be better if I was helping instead of just holding the camera, yeah? But this is what we got to do to help these people out, so. I right, get it lined up, not too bad, right? A little bit of wiggling and pushing. And, oh, wrong way! No, just joking. <laughs> wrong way, mate, take it back out, it's got to go there. Anyway, the nut goes on the other side. You know the deal, then these uh, nuts, these two bolts up here, 19 mil they are, for, they're 19s, aren't they, yeah? And bang, nice and tight on these ones as well here, nice and tight. And that one at the bottom, they're nice and tight. And these ones, and the bottom of the shocker, should always be tightened on the ground in a neutral position for the suspension so you're not twisting the bushes. Look at that, beautiful. There it is, the nuts on the front. So what I do, personally, I tighten these up, tighten them up, and then put on the ground and then loosen them and tighten them again, or tighten these up just so it pulls the bolt all the way through, and then loosen it, and just do it up finger tight so then it's on the ground and hit it again to do it up. Do you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, as long as you're not twisting, Look, to be quite honest, the difference. So if you do a suspension install, a lot of people say, oh, you've got to loosen all this, whatever. The biggest cause of damage on these bushes is when the bolt seized and people twisting and doing wheel alignments. But um, when you do a suspension lift, it's depending how much you're going up, you should sometimes loosen these, but most of the time it's only a, it's like literally if you measured in degrees, we're talking single digits, a couple of degrees, a few degrees, very little change in the angle if you know what i mean and the, the rubbers can twist a lot more than that but sometimes putting too much twist on bushes is what's going to cause the problem so although there is a precaution there to tighten on the ground it's not a massive big deal um, usually the bushes that fail this type of bush is uh the rubbish ones anyway guys that's the video it's getting boring thanks for watching hope you like it smash the like button catch on the next one and um bada bing we're out of here you know subscribe turn the bell on see ya